Biology 1, 2022, November 2022, 1590, paper 1. I'll do 10 questions. Let me try and do 10 questions each and see how far or how good it could be because sometimes the videos are so long and I feel like people sometimes feel lazy to continue watching. So let me try and do two questions. So this is High School Science 26, Starlight Stoneheart is my ear. Don't read really my name, but I don't know. I just love astrophysics. So allow me to get to question one. I flip the paper. Okay, 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 here we go. Uh, okay, question one. Uh, a learner was walking along a road alone with a bag, a uh, school bag, when he saw an object under a tree. Uh, when the learner touched the object, it changed its color, rolled over and divided into two, uh, uh, yeah, divided into two. Which characteristic of living organisms has the object shown? I've seen this question before <laughs> in some old, old paper. Movement, because it rolled over. Reproduction, because it became two. It was one, maybe there was some mounting taking place there. And I don't even know why the learner had to start touching organisms who were busy, you know, doing bad things. Sensitivity, changed color. I don't know what they mean by changing color, but that's sense sensitivity. They could have been chameleons or something, but sensitivity, those are the most appropriate. Respiration, no. Growth, no. Nutrition, it wasn't eating. It divided into two. So I think these are the most appropriate. The answer there, my answer, my pick is D. Question two. Uh, which of the following correctly shows the path allowed by light by a light beam from a mirror to a viewer of a specimen under a microscope? Wow, this question is if uh, is, is a full mouth. Uh, specimen from the specimen, light is reflected, then it passes through the lens, through the body tube or the barrel, then the eyepiece, then into the eye. My answer is D. Um, question three. Uh, a learner investigated osmosis in potatoes. He set up the apparatus as shown. This is a potato cylinder P, potato cylinder Q, distilled water, very concentrated sugar. Here you should know what osmosis is. Osmosis is simply the movement of water from a region where it's a lot to a region where it is less through a semi-permeable membrane. So the, at the beginning, the potato cylinders were exactly balanced. Um, he makes the cylinders into the liquids for four hours, four solid hours, after, after which the cylinders were lifted out of the liquids. Cylinder P was now heavier than cylinder Q. Which statement explains what happened? Water moved into cylinder P. Why? This is distilled water, pure water. These potatoes got solids and the water will move in by osmosis into the cylinder from a region where it's a lot, where it's pure, where it's, it's by itself. In other words, osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. This one will actually lose water. So I answer there is P, cylinder P. Question four, two samples of human enzymes were uh, used in the experiment, in an experiment. Before they were used, sample X was heated to 80 and cooled to 37, and sample Y was cooled to zero and then heated to 37. How did this affect the enzyme activity? Sample Y was active while sample X was inactive. Why was active? Because when you cool them to zero degrees, enzymes don't get destroyed, they just become inactive. But when you heat, like the way sample X was heated to 80 degrees, there's denaturation there. The enzyme cannot even renature itself because renaturation is uh, a, a process through which an enzyme gains back its shape after almost losing it due to high temperature or even a low pH or even high pH. So here the answer is Y. Sample Y was inactive. The enzymes were denatured. Uh, I move the paper to question five. The following table shows the percentage of carbohydrates. The following table shows the percentage of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in four food samples. Which food sample contains the most energy? I went for A. Look at the carbohydrate percentage. This is energy, an energy source. Look at this again, an energy source. Um, protein, 0.4. They're following energy. So when I compared, uh, this one has had the highest carbohydrate, which is uh, the immediate energy source. But here you have um, 33, which is almost as uh, similar to 36. But um, I chose for this because uh, when I 
put this together, the per a larger percentage is taken up by these compared to the percentage of this in the same food sample. Okay, so at the end of it all, this one has got a larger percentage, A has a larger percentage of it having carbohydrates and fats, meaning a larger portion of a nutrient or nutrients that are a source of energy. So compared to the others, that was my take. I was almost going for this because fats offer more energy than lipids, but I went for this because I just added. You can revise that one um, to be more clear. Number six, the following symptoms can be used, can be caused by a dietary deficiency, bone pain, dental problems, fragile bones, skeletal deformities. Which nutrient deficiency is most likely to cause these symptoms? Vitamin D. Vitamin D is the answer because vitamin D promotes our bone health and bone formation. Remember, bone formation continues even in adults because bones are living tissue. They can actually regenerate and degenerate themselves depending on the conditions like diet and stress. Seven, which of the following groups of people need more carbohydrates in their diet? Sick people and pre-age school. Carbohydrates give energy. If someone is sick, they really need some energy to build up more molecules to recover, to build up their, 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 no, the, the, the molecules for their anabolism, the synthesis of, of different things in their bodies to simply take place and even the energy to just walk and talk. Apart from that, these guys, people, these guys are the rulers of this world. They enjoy life, you know, they demand for things, they cry for things, and they don't even work. So they play a lot. They need energy. Number eight, a plant had the following signs. Poor root growth, small reproductive organs. Ooh, this plant was in trouble. Small reproductive organs. Which nutrient was the plant lacking? Phosphorus. Phosphorus is the answer there. Uh, number nine, the diagram shows the internal structure of a dicotyledonous leaf. Dicot leaf, dicotyledonous leaf. Um, which part transports mineral salts and water? Part B. Part B. This is the xylem, and down here, this is the phloem. Up here, that's the xylem. Okay, this is the palisade layer, the spongy mesophyll. These are actually, these could be, I don't know what these could be. There could be veins, okay, in the leaf. Uh, the orientation is also good, but this should be a vein or so. But um, the answer there is B. The, 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 the xylem is on top, then below is the phloem. Allow me to flip to question 10 as I close this short video. Question 10, which of the following best describes saprophytic nutrition? Feeding on dead or organic or decaying organic matter. Feeding on dead or organic or decaying organic matter is the, one of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the one of the, th the things that saprophytes do. You know, it's, it's one of the identity for saprophytic nutrition. They feed on dead or organ decaying organic matter. I end here for this video. Let me try to post this in portions so that you can easily watch it in 10 minutes. And then if you want to watch another one, you can go come back. I don't know. Let me try this, but um, I end here for this video. Bye-bye, and I'll see you in the next videos. Manyapa here saying adios.